Hello dear viewers, welcome back to Crazy Road Studio. Today we will look at how to carry out a networker server migration or in other words what exactly do you do when you have to change the host name of the server which is hosting your networker server. Before we start a quick announcement, Networker Commands app is now available for iOS so you can download it from the Apple Store uh, starting from next week. Go ahead, download the app and support and enjoy using the app. So not very often but uh, you might have to come across a situation wherein you might have to rename your networker, uh, the host name of a networker server. So this might be because you have to change the fkdn or if you have to change the host name because of uh, changing the name uh, changing a naming convention in your organization for some compliance issues or some change in design uh, you have a hardware refresh and or an os refresh which needs a, a change in the host name again because of maybe a, a naming convention uh, or it might be for a DR drill as we spoke in the last video wherein you, your organization or your enterprise wants you to use a different host name than the one uh, being used on your production environment. So why is a server migration important? Why don't we just leave it as it? So this is important because the, the networker server is a client to itself and this is for owning of the bootstrap backup as well as the index backup since these are uh, normal backups as considered in the media database it needs an owner and these backups are owned by the client instance of the networker server itself so why is it important to hold on to this backups or uh, this information is that bootstrap backup uh, does not have any issues it can be restored to any other server with any other different host name it will go ahead and uh, recover easily not an issue but as far as your indexes are concerned uh, recovery of your index backups so when I say recovery those are uh, the restore of indexes not by running the scanner but by running the nsrck-l7 wherein the indexes are restored from the backup so in that scenario uh, wherever you run an NSRCK-L7, what Networker does is it goes and checks the index backups to the client ID of the Networker server. And if it is not able to find any index backups uh, attached to the client instance uh, or the, that particular client ID, it is going to come back and say that there are no backups available, even though the backups that are available belong to a old host name so uh, this is more important in dr drill scenarios wherein you do not have the indexes already or in case you are moving to a completely new hardware or an operating system where you don't have anything and you do have to do a ns networker dr to get the resource database and the media database and for getting the client indexes or recovering the client indexes you need to have that uh, relationship restored so how we do this uh, we will uh, see in a few minutes so before we go ahead and show you how to do this let's go through the steps that are involved so this wherever you're renaming a networker server to a different host name you need a dummy host name which is going to be an intermediate host name between the old host name and the new host name so this is required because you cannot delete all the client instances when a client instance is belongs to the networker server so we need to release those clients and make it a normal client and to do that we have to intermediately go to a intermediate networker server uh, a server host name uh, and when we are on that host name we do the swapping of the client ids and uh, that is how we get the client ids reassigned so we need uh, to create a dummy client instance before shutting down the services because uh, if you have done dr drills with change in host name you might have come across the nightmare that the network server does not start after the host name has been changed uh, this is because whenever a networker server starts it is going to go ahead and check if there is a client instance of the networker server created in its resource database so if it is created only and only then it is able to check 
uh, the uh, configurations and then it is able to come up so if it is not it does not find the client instance it will not come up so it is a good practice to create the dummy uh, the client instance with the dummy host name before you shut down the services do not create the client instance uh, of the server before you do uh, the uh, renaming so this has to be done or the new client instance has to be created when your uh, network server is in that intermediate state where you are you are using that dummy host name as uh, the host name of your network server so for this uh, to work you also need to have an entry in your um, uh, host file so map your ip address of the network server to this dummy host name and also make sure that you put an entry of the dummy name on uh, the um, the etc host files in case of a linux machine if in case you are on a windows machine then you will have to go through the reboot because there is no an alternative for uh, windows um, all right so next we change the host name to the intermediate host name for the network server uh, reassign the client ID of the old network client instance to client uh, instance to the new client instance and again shut down the services rename the server to the final host name and then start the services and you are good to go so let's go ahead and uh, create all this so what I have done is I have already created the dummy client instance so what I have done is I have added uh, the dummy host name in my etc host name file so it is going to pick up the first one so that is done then I have also added the entry in my host file so this is the IP address of my backup server so I have done that alright so now that we have done all that let's go ahead and start the service so service network host heart and then we are gonna tail the network server so you can see that it has accepted dummy as the host name and it has come up or it is coming up as expected because we already have that client id or uh, client instance created so you if you think you if you have not created that client instance uh, before shutting down the services what you could do is you could create the client id using this command here uh, make sure that you type this in because if you you know uh, you know type it in a uh, word then the ascii for these double quotes might be different so it is best to look at this and uh, type it in so i'll try to put this on the description as well where you can go ahead and uh, uh, copy it from and again make sure that when you're copying it you change the quotes and type it in um, properly so let's see looks like everything is up let's go ahead and run nsr watch so you'll see this because uh, the nsr uh, resource still contains uh, the nsr linux in its name so don't worry about that you can ignore this but if you see here it is starting all the services and everything relative to the um, the network server so let's go ahead and launch the nmc right now that we have uh, done all that and the services are back up and running i'm on the nmc now and you will see the dummy client that we have created and the server name is dummy as well so let's go ahead and swap the client ids so to do this the first step to do is to go ahead and uh, open up the client instance of the network server enable view diagnostic mode make sure that you are on diagnostic mode and 
copy the client ID which is under globals one of two let me open up a notepad and paste it in there and then cancel all right so next step is to get rid of these um, instances so if my networker server was uh, or if this client was a networker server it would not allow me to delete all of the client instances for the server so one and two okay it says it's still not able to delete it let's see why so to get rid of that error we'll have to change the audit log owner here so let's try and delete these or at least change the host name of the audit log to dummy for now and then we can switch it back once we do the complete migration so that is that and let's come back to the client and here is the network server or the old one at least and now we have gotten rid of the uh, the client for the old network server so now remember that we have stored the client ID for the uh, old network uh, server client instance you know our task is to assign this to the new host name so now if you remember the new host name that we have so don't go ahead and do uh, create the client under using the client wizard use it use the new client property which is the manual method of creating the client and first let me go ahead and paste the client id come back put the client name which is nsr server 01 i hope i got that right let's go ahead and confirm before doing anything uh, this one okay this is the correct console let's clear this cat tc hosts and this is the client i gotta fix this before we go ahead so as i told you the host name does not take an underscore in linux so let's fix it to a hyphen and that's about it let's close clear and this is the server name and say okay now you'll get a warning telling that the initial uh, this particular client is nsr linux and you are renaming it to nsr linux 01 so let's go ahead and click okay okay again and now if you look at the client instance the client id is going to be the same as the original client id all right so now this step is completed now if you have been um, if you have noted the steps that i had showed earlier uh, let's quickly go there so now we have changed the host name to an intermediate and we have resigned the reassigned the client id to the new host name instance so let's go ahead and shut down the services again F. so let me wait until the services are down right so the services are down so let's go ahead and rename our uh, backup server to the new name which is uh, let's say slash etc host name and the new name was Linux zero one so let's go ahead and say host name nsr linux zero one ouch there you go 
so now that is done let's start the services service network start okay my services are coming up now I had actually forgotten one step which is to assign the IP address of your server to the new host name because now that your host name is new so you can actually remove the dummy entry now so let's go ahead and do that as well so let's remove this um, let me start the GSTD service fat fingers Uh, all right now that uh, the services are up let's go ahead and check if the backups have been reassigned all right so let's go ahead and check only for this you might already see that the indexes have been reassigned to the new host name the bootstrap has been assigned to the new host name and so is the backup of the original uh, uh, backup server host so so one of the things that uh, you might encounter during this process is the nmc configuration because the nmc configuration as you know depends on otc for authentication and whenever you change the host name the host name of the otc would also change so every time uh, you do the change of the server host name i would recommend to go ahead and reconfigure your uh, uh, net uh, your network management console configuration using the script that uh, you usually use I think that I have the script here so this is that script uh, which you would need to run so that uh, you have the correct OTC configuration for your NMC and you do not face any issues uh, after the upgrade you would also want to run the NSR add admin command to make sure that uh, the server has uh, is being assigned to the correct uh, groups as well so this is all I have for the server migration and renaming of the network server uh, I am pretty sure that you might encounter additional issues so please use my Twitter handle to raise any discussions or you could go ahead and uh, you know start a discussion on the comment uh, section uh, I do reply to comments as often as possible so uh, I sh if in case you do have an issue uh, you should be able to get some help from the other members in our community or from me or you can always come to the Dell Networker community on the Dell support page and there are a lot of people who are knowledgeable and are active on that page and I am there as well so I can help you with uh, any issues that you face there but ultimately support is your best friend so you can always go to support uh, for a quicker resolution thanks for sticking with me till the end of this video I hope you found this useful if you have any questions or comments share it with our community in the comment section below or you can drop me a message at my Twitter account I will see you on another video Goodbye.